The Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, on Monday recorded 245 new cases of the coronavirus COVID-19, bringing the total number of infections in Nigeria to 2,802. The NCDC also said that six new patients have been confirmed dead to the virus in the country, bringing the total number of deaths to 93. The agency on its confirmed Twitter handle on Monday night said that 245 new cases were recorded from 16 states. 76 in Lagos, 37 Katsina, 32 in Jigawa, 23 Kano, 19 FCT, 18 Borno, 10 in Edo, 9 Bauchi, 6 in Adama, 5 in H from Oyo and Ogun, while 1 H from Ikiti, Oshun, Benue, Niger and Zamfara. Joining us live is the Secretary Christian Medical Dental Association, CDMA, River State, Dr. Ovunda Inyeche. Good morning, Doctor, and thank you for joining us on the news. Good morning, Doctor. How are you? Hi, good morning, Benyak. How are you doing this morning, Doctor? I'm doing great. How are you doing, too? Fine, thank you very much. A, a lot of consternation seems to be around how the post-lockdown protocols will protect us from as people. Now, in your observation, are these adequate measures being followed to prevent an increased spread? All right, so it's important to note that the war against uh, COVID-19 is not just for the government alone. Everybody needs to play their part. Yesterday, I watched with shock the kind of videos I saw online and pictures I saw online of people after the lockdown. One of the advice was that people should, you know, wear non-medical masks as they go out. Yesterday, I saw a lot of people not wearing masks. In fact, I saw a tweet where somebody was saying that Somebody, somebody wanted to enter into a bank and had to borrow a mask from somebody to enter the bank so that when he enters, he can return the um, mask back to the person. So these are things that can increase the spread of infection. Also, we have been told part of the advisory is that um, not more than 10 to 20 people should gather in a place. But yesterday, we saw a lot of people gathered in a place. We also talked about um, facility owners, if people coming in, they should screen for temperature and also have things to wash hands and sanitizers. I did not see that. Yesterday, in many places, the, the pictures I watched. Also, we've been told that interstate travel is restricted for now. But we know people travel from state to state. So it's very important that everybody has to play their part. Everybody has to play their part so that we can win this war against uh, COVID-19. How do we marry medical requirements with the realities on ground? Okay, as we speak, we have about um, 74,000, just a little above 74,000 doctors in Nigeria, and that means doctor-patient ratio is about 1 to 2,753. And this is assuming all the people mentioned are all clinicians and practicing. So the reality is that we don't want our hospitals to be overflowed, and that is why everybody has to play their part. Everybody has to play their part. We don't want our hospital filled with COVID-19 patients, and that is why everyone has to play their part to ensure that we stop the transmission of COVID-19. Between the federal government and the health sector, what do you think the focus should be more on right now? Is it just on containing the virus or coming up with herbal remedies or even herb immunity? All or none of the above, doctor? <laughs> all right. Every, now, we, we all have our unique situations. Right now, there is no specific treatment, no vaccine right now. And so one of the things that we should focus on is prevention, prevention, prevention. Another thing we should focus on is detection, detection, detection. Now, for herbal remedies, the, the reality is that okay, a, a country came up with a herbal remedy. But the reality is that before we say herbal remedy, we want to find out what does the drug, what does the drug contain. We want to find out the side effects. We want to find out how many studies was carried out before that drug was brought. We want to find out evidence-based. Medicine is not just carrying herbs and giving to people. It has to be evidence-based. And as regards herd immunity, let's be frank, what's herd immunity? It's like a form of indirect protection from infectious disease. And it occurs because a large chunk of the population are immune, either because they have had the infection before or they've had the vaccination. Now, for herd immunity to, to uh, come about, that means that 80% of the population have to be immune. And we are talking about 80% of Nigeria. That would be about 160 million Nigerians. For COVID-19, we know that it's a novel disease, and therefore there are no vaccines or drugs available. So what it would mean is that for us to say we want to wait for herd immunity, a, a, a 160 million Nigerians have to be infected. Also, what this means is that if we take the case fatality rate of this disease to be 3%, that means about 4.8 million Nigerians will have to pass on, you know, for this herd immunity to take place. So that is why it's very important 
everybody plays their part. It's very important that everybody be responsible. You know, we talk about the government. We also, as citizens, we have to play our part. We have to obey a uh, public health advisory so that we can do what we can do to break the transmission. What are the likely positives for, for you in this fight against COVID-19 in our nation? Okay, one of the positives is that, if you notice very well, the NCDC recently announced that the emergency phase for Lassa fever has ended. Uh, so what it means is that um, we don't have the upsurge of Lassa fever cases. And I think for the past two weeks, we've had no Lassa fever deaths. So because why is this important? It's important because this period, physical uh, hygiene, personal hygiene has been emphasized. And that is a very important tool to use to control Lassa fever. Also, one of the positives is the fact that um, these days, because of what is happening, a lot of people have to invest in the healthcare system, a um, healthcare system that was neglected. You see these days in the hospital, people that you naturally or we don't see in our public hospitals now come to public hospitals. So it's very important that we ramp this up, not just about last um, about COVID-19, but we have to deliberately invest in our healthcare system. We have to ensure that our doctors stay and not leave. We have to ensure our nurses stay and not leave. We have to ensure that hospitals have the right equipment so that everybody can benefit. Finally, Doctor, how do we ensure that this state-by-state -state approach, approach, especially in the light of the development in Kano, does not further exacerbate an already, you know, tenuous situation? Okay, basically, um, it's important to know that this um, approach should be from the federal government to the local government. Everybody has to be work hand in hand. Uh, so this is not a we versus them situation. Um, people have to be tested. People have to, um, diagnosis has to be made and then they have to be treated as the case may be. So this is not a situation where you say, okay, I'm happy because my state has one case and then another state has 30 or 300 cases. This is a situation where everybody has to play their part. And what it means is that healthcare professionals should be allowed to lead, not politicians. Uh, that was a situation where a state had to tell their state epidemiologists not to send maybe more than 10 samples. So but the reality is that everybody's hand has to be on back and politicians should allow medical professionals to lead the charge. And we hope that there will be cooperation from the top to the bottom. Everybody will play their part. Those that have symptoms, we open up. The people that are supposed to test, will test. Results will come out. People that have the infection will take into treatment centers, as the case may be. So everybody has to play their vital role. All right, Doctor, thank you very much for joining us and for your contribution on the news this morning. So thank you so much. Thank you so much.